forget, you know, how upset my mom was. And, uh, you know, seeing the look on her face, I didn't, I didn't know what else to tell her, you know. I just gave her a hug and, you know, told her, uh, don't worry about us. You know, God has a plan for us. And uh, I didn't really know that he did have a plan for us. I was just trying to cheer her up at the moment. And uh, come to find out, the shelter that we stayed at was Christian-based. And, uh, you know, every night we had a, a memory verse that uh, we had to memorize the scriptures from the Bible. And, uh, you know, we uh, had an hour-long Bible study every night. And uh, I really started to read the Bible and, you know, really started to learn, you know, about Jesus really for the first time as an adult. Um, and I, I received this little Bible when I was there. And uh, I read it every day for about four months. It's been a while ever since, you know. When uh, I still pull it out sometimes, you know, if I'm out somewhere and struggling, having a rough time. Um, you know, there's, there's just so many different scriptures in here that touch me. And, uh, one I want to read today was uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. My peace I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And, uh, you know, I've had countless situations over the last couple of years that, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? And, uh, you know, this, this one little verse right here just always eases my heart, helps me get through pretty much any tough time. Um, you know, it, it just, it, it pretty much explains itself, you know. Let not your heart be troubled, so neither let it be afraid. That, that, that always inspires me just to keep my head up and keep moving forward, you know. Can't let things of this world bring you down because, you know, it's a cruel world and if you let if you let it beat you, it'll beat you down every day. And uh, you know, luckily, luckily we have such a loving God that we can overcome the things of this world. You know, he, he sent His Son for us. You know, he, he gave His only Son to die for us. And, I mean, as a father, I couldn't imagine doing that. I mean, if, if somebody wanted to, you know, fall the hair on my son's head. Drive me crazy. I, honestly, it's the human side of me. I, I probably want to kill him if somebody tried to harm my son. You know, we have such a loving God that He gave His Son to come die for all of us. So I, I'm so grateful for that. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope everybody realizes what a big thing that is that our, our Lord has done for us. And, uh, I don't know, I, I always have so much I want to say, and when I get done, I always get something. But, you know, I'm sure I'll probably think of something later on this, so next time I get a chance, I'll bring it up again. But uh, for now, now we're heading for it. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, bringing us together on this beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for uh, bringing our friends and family out to church today to, to worship and praise you. Please uh, bless this service. Bless everyone in the house today. And, um, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us all the chance to uh, redeem ourselves of, of our troubles in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we lift up our hands, we
this message off just a little different today. Dave, you're putting in the lights for me. There's this video by the guys called the Skid Guys. If you've been here any amount of time, you'll, you will recognize the guys in the video. But they, they, they're speaking about a very powerful message today. And I'm going to let them sort of get the opening. And then we'll discuss, we'll, we'll look at what God's placed upon my heart after I, after I saw this video. I said, that's, that's what I need to do. And, um, and like I said, this video, if you're in this place this morning, this video will speak to you. It will talk about what's going on in your life. And... Um, and we'll see what God has in store for the rest of it. But I just love how they can paint such a visual picture of what all of us go through. I don't care who you are this morning. You see yourself in that skin. You see yourself as the one carrying baggage. And see, and I want you to know that carrying baggage in this life has only one effect on us. It wears us out. And that's the bad news. It'll weigh you down, it'll wear you out, it'll frustrate you. But there is good news too. We can have rest and peace in this life, but we can only get that from who? From Jesus. If we're willing to put our baggage down. Now real quick, I just want to ask several questions, and I'm going to get through some verses here. I want to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about this morning, because that's the key. If you, know, if you don't understand, there's no sense in speaking anything about what we're talking about. So what is meant by the term baggage? Anybody have any idea? I mean, anybody want to just shout out an answer or think you think what it might be? What, what is meant by baggage? What? Anger. Anger. That's the kind of baggage we can carry. But, but what, is, what is meant by the term baggage? See, baggage are the things that hinder one's freedom, that hinders our progress, that may hinder our development, our adaptability. They're obstructions. And as I said, hinder, they're hindrances. There are things, it is things that get in the way of us living life the way that God has intended us to live life. And I'm not just talking about sinners more because you notice what he said there. He was named a lot of different things, and then he said, what he said, then there's the last bag, and then there's this bag. The secret of my, my sin, my secret sin. See, we all deal with baggage. What 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 is some of the baggage we can carry in course of being? See, See, the sign that first came up. What's some of the stuff? What's some baggage that we can carry? And Jim said, anger. What's, what's some other things that, that we can carry? Fear. Fear. Fear is something because, you know, we'd be allowed to, to grip us. We won't, we won't step forward. Now, I don't have something to answer behind you. Fear. Anger. Depression. Guilt. And the thing is, anxiety. Resentment. What else? Hurt. Hurt. You know, there, there, there's a lot of baggage out there, and, and unfortunately, many times, we, as individuals, we, we just hold on to it. We, we never seem to be, to be able to let it go or be willing to let it go. How does our baggage affect us? Like I said, we know it's a hindrance, but do what? Health. Health, it, it, it can wreak havoc on our health. Yes. Okay. It can allow hatred, it, 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 just the action of hatred, and then that emotion to come forth or easy where if someone just sort of looks at you the wrong way, you're ready to bite their head off. Anyone else? Trust what is it? Trust issues. Unforgiveness. You know, baggage can have a lot of bad effects in our lives. Well, why is it so hard to get rid of? Because sometimes what is human beings is being human. We want to hold on to that hurt because we allow it to fuel the anger, the resentment, the guilt, the fear, the 
resentment. The emotional struggles. And sometimes we hold on to it because we don't know what else to do with it. As he said, sometimes we try to pawn it off on somebody else. As he said, it always seems to what come directly firing back at us, but even worse than it was before. See, that, see, that's the bad news of baggage. But like I said, there, there's good news too. We, we, can, we can have rest and peace in this life only when we'll give it to Jesus. Only if we're willing to let it go. And I'm going to look for a briefly this morning what the good news about baggage that the Bible declares. What the Bible tells us about baggage. And he ended the video with what I'm going to read here this morning. This is what he was talking about in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It says this, it says, And Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. See, you need to understand, Jesus didn't come to tell you how bad you are. I'm going to get to this a little bit later on. He didn't come to tell you how bad you are, how wicked you are. He came to do what? He came to give you rest and peace. He says, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. See, when, when he comes into your heart, he doesn't want to put a ton of rules and regulations on you. He wants to bring freedom and peace and liberty to your life. It is the young forty the church has proclaimed a message that's been a false and a lie. As they simply said, you know, the one saying, your sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And how that is such a lie. The same as the church has presented the lie out there that, that there's all, once you accept Jesus Christ, there's all these rules and regulations you must abide by. But Jesus isn't about rules. He's about giving you peace, rest, and freedom. And about changing a heart and a life. That's what Jesus is about. The writer of the message, he, he words... Matthew 11, 20 through 30, this way. He says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? I'm here to tell you, we at this church, we do not, we're not in a religion. We're in a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a difference. Because I know I'm just not serving Jesus because he, He's never said, I'm serving because I have a personal relationship with Him. I can go to Him and talk to Him. And He will respond back through His words, through moving upon my spirit. He will lead and guide and direct my steps. Burn down on religion. Come to me. Get away with me. And you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. This is Jesus talking. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. See, too many times, too, we think that when we come to Jesus or we come to God, that all of a sudden He's going to make us do something we never want to do. But God, He will never, He may stretch your comfort zone, but He's going to use you in the talents and the abilities that you have. You may be afraid to step out in them, but He will give you the strength and the ability and the courage to step out in your strength and what you love and what you desire. See, He created your personality. He, he allowed you to have certain wants and desires for a reason, and He will usually He will He won't put anything or or ill fitting on you. He says, "Keep company with Me." And you learn to live freely and like the other You learn to let go of what? The baggage. In 1 Peter 5, 7, Peter says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. See, like I said, God is just not some being up in heaven ready to just crack you over the head when you step over the line. He wants you to cast all these cares, all these words, whatever's going on in your life, He just wants you to give it to Him. Why? Because He cares about you. Because He loves you. Psalms 55, 22 says, Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. He will be there. He'll, he'll be there to, to, to lead and guide and direct your steps. To see you through. As Charlie was talking this morning about how you know, he was just at first telling his mom, you know, he has a plan 
for this. It's okay, God's in control. Not really realizing what he was really saying at the time. You probably sort of believed it, but didn't really know. But yet through this time, I know it, through, through just talks that Charlie had, he, he knows that God is leading and directing his and Christie's steps. Not everything's been easy, but the thing is, we always told you, you know, Jesus never promises us an easy road. He will give us peace and rest, yes, but that still doesn't mean the road is going to be what? Easy. easy. But He did promise He would be with us always. He never leave us nor forsake us. But I ask the question, why would God do this for us? And then you begin to get the hints of it in, in, in the, what I read in Peter. But this is what Jesus said in John 3, 16. A lot of times, you know, we, we, we use John 3, 16, but I'm going to put 17 and 18 with it because it's so important you put those three verses together. Why would God do this for you? Is this for God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life? Now listen to what 17 says. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. And I want to stop and remember I told you, Jesus didn't come to tell you how bad you are. He came to save you. He came to give you a life that is worth living. That's what He came to do. Many, how many of you here know you, you've messed up? How many of you, you you know you're carrying baggage? You know, your, your, your life is it's, it's, it's messed up. He didn't come to remind you of that. He didn't come to condemn you of that. He came to save you. And verse 18 says, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Him, but anyone who does not believe in Him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. See, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and, and they asked the question, Well, why does God send, you know, he then, you, know you die, then He sends you to hell. I said, No, you're wrong. God doesn't send anyone to hell. You send yourself. See, this baggage that you have, he's giving you away to let it go, to let loose of it. And, and again, he's saying, he's saying, here he says, I will take it, I will take it off your hands, and I, and I will handle it for you, and I will give you back rest and peace and a, and a light burden. I will allow you to live free and lightly if you just come to me. And this is what he's saying, but there's so many people that there's, you know, I, 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 I can do it myself. And they keep on finding themselves weighed down with the baggage or with the sins in their lives. And Jesus, in this, in this verse, he's simply saying, it's your refusal to believe in God's Son. It's, it's your rejection of Him. That's what condemns you already. That's what finds you separated from God and keeps you separated from Him. Even though the Son came and, and, and brought to bring this relationship back together, your refusal to believe in the Son, to believe in me, is what already condemns you. But He came to save us. He came to rescue us. He came to, if we will, if we will allow Him to take the baggage and for us to give it to Him. There's a few questions I want you to, to think about. If you never turn your baggage over to God, what do you think your life will be like? If you refuse to let him come in and take this baggage from you, what will your life be like? And we sort of discussed that a little bit. If you do, what will it be like? What's keeping you from dropping your baggage at God's feet? What's holding you back? What? 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 What are you trying to hold on to so dearly that you're not willing to drop your baggage at His feet? What baggage are you going to give to God in becoming you? See, because there's, there's times where we, what, we let baggage down, and what do we do after we let it down? Right? We, we take a few steps, and then we, we may either return and pick up the baggage we just dropped, or we do what? Pick up. A new bag. I begin to carry it around. After he promised us a light load, rest, and peace. 
So we watched a pretty powerful clip about baggage, and I surely hope you're today, you're, you don't think we're talking about a suitcase. I hope today you're not missing the point that we're, we're, we're not talking about a suitcase. We're using a suitcase, we're using the baggage, a, a bag, a piece of luggage. You know, you know, luggage? Why? Because it's something you lug around. <laughs> but what we're talking about, like I said, is guilt, shame, regret, fear, loneliness. All those other negative things that accompany our sin and failures in lives in our life. But one thing's for sure, there's a lot of baggage in life. We all have it. Every single one of us has baggage. Every morning when we wake up, we unconsciously pick up our baggage and head out the door. As an unfortunate, that baggage just weighs us down. It even hurts others in our lives. We carry around all that baggage, not only, not only slows us down, but it brings us down. And as long as we're carrying around baggage, we aren't living the life that Jesus had in mind for us. <clears throat> but the good news is, and I, and I declare this, so the good news is we don't have to carry that baggage forever. And isn't that an awesome thought? You don't have to carry those burdens, those cares, those things that weigh you down. You don't have to carry them forever. We have Jesus' permission to put it down at any time and leave it there forever. In fact, if we want, if we want rest and peace from God, then we must put down our baggage. We got to drop it. We got to let it go. Because again, I want to remind you of Jesus' invitation to every broken, guilty, isolated sinner in the world and in this place today. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And after reading that verse, my only question for you is, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? He's offering you the freedom just to let it go, to let it loose, to exchange your baggage for what He wants to give you. He's offering it to you. Josh and Patrick, if you would, I have some paper up here and a box of pencils. They're going to hand out some slips of paper to you as our musicians come after their you can go there and then you get in place. I want to give you the opportunity this morning to make a conscious Ever a conscious move. You don't need to write your name on those pieces of paper, they're just blank. But what I want you to do, we talked about baggage this morning. I want you to write on those sheets of paper the baggage you're carrying. Write it on there as an act of faith. The mess, the gunk, the fears, the resentments. done right, just fold it in half. And we're going to sing a song. The, the, the song is going to be 
saying earlier in our worship called Who Can Satisfy? I'm going to ask you as we sing this song, as you write it down in obedience to what I'm telling you, in step of faith what I'm telling you, fold it up. And then in another act of faith, get up from where you are, come up and place it in this suitcase as a symbolic gesture of giving it over to Jesus. Now saying, Lord, I heard what the preacher said today. I heard what the pastor talked about how you said, I can cast all my cares upon you. I can lay my heavy load down to you and pick up the free and light load that you are offering. See, because all of this, you know, when we talk about believing in Jesus, it's a step of faith. It's an act of faith. It's stepping out and saying, I believe what is said about him, that he died, that he came to rescue me, he came to save me, and he died for my sins. And as a step of faith, just walk out. Step up. Drop it in the suitcase. And you go back into your seat and you begin to pray or begin to worship with us as we sing this song. And just imagine giving it over to him. And the suitcase is going to represent Jesus taking it all. Him taking our baggage instead of us. He's going to bear it instead of us. And let the freedom that he offers begin to just take control of your life. So we can come. Who can satisfy my soul like you? And who on earth can comfort me and love me like you do? Promises in his word. Aroma. 